Hello everyone, this is Chris from the CPK Studios, as you can hear, and in this video, we have Darnell from the Flyboy EK for the Blue Blur channel. Hello. And and we have the one, the only, Mike Bullock. Hello. And um, we decided to contact him for an interview and for a long period of time. And it, it, it was mainly because of things that have been happening in our life stuff like that um, weren't able to get the interview until today but now we have it do the interview and, and let's get right into it okay so um uh would you like to start with the first question um you have the questions up right yeah i was i was talking about oh. it, so. <laughs> i'm sure all right so the first question we have is from Super Shadow Seven Eight Twelve, and their question is: Could you ask him if he does any voice work for independent projects? Uh, uh sure. I, in general, I work for anyone who's willing to pay me, within reason. But sure, I'm a freelancer, so I work for all sorts of people. All right. Nice. All right. Question number two from Bethelis Z2. Ask him if he has or would ever dress up as Eggman, talk as him or someone, like the kids who have those illnesses or a limited time to survive and stuff. I have to clear it with the folks at Sega. Uh, probably dress. As long as had Sega's blessings, sure, because they own the character and technically the voice. I'm just the guy who sounds like him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's awesome. Now we have a few questions from a person named Knuckler Drag or Knucker Dragon. Sorry. Have you ever used any of your voices outside of work, like you're going to a drive-through, um, or, or talking on the phone? Um, not usually because. The um, fan base is so narrow and specific that chances are folks at the drive-thru are going to have no idea who I am or what I'm talking about. They'll just think I'm some weird guy doing a wacky voice. The one incident that I like to relate, because it actually happened, I was at an amusement park. I was at a, at a fair with my family, and some kid walked by dragging a uh, giant uh, Sonic plush that he won at a Midway game. And I couldn't resist that opportunity. So I looked up from my refreshing beverage and just yelled, Look, it's Sonic! And just watched his head whip around as I <laughs> feigned complete ignorance and didn't let on that that was making such a noise. Uh, oh. <laughs> that was a troll move, Mike, but it, it, it was pretty, it was a good laugh, though. It had that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, question number well not number but the next question same by the same person Knucker Dragon are there any characters that you would have liked to play but weren't cast as every character anywhere I love working so. <laughs> I'm not real picky I like to work yeah <laughs> is there a particular Eggman line that, that you would like to say or is your favorite um, they tend to all blur together because I don't spend as much time listening to my dialogue as folks who are playing games and watching cartoons that I'm in. So, not really. I'm, I'm there to say what the writers write and what they have me say. Um, so generally I will, I'll remember specific scenes more than specific dialogue. Like in the Sonic X cartoon, which I remember mostly because it was easier to see again because it was on TV week after week but moments where uh, uh, for example Dr. Eggman broke the fourth wall of TV and took a phone call from a viewer and uh, I enjoyed uh, having him answer the phone with a hearty hello <laughs> alright the next question is actually a question that was requested by two people well they weren't requested exactly not the same question they were very similar, so I decided to just put them together. Okay. And this is from Stefan the Hedgehog and DC Leadboot. Their question is 
How did you feel when you were chosen to be the voice actor of Dr. Eggman? Well, generally when I book any gig, it's really cool, no matter what the gig is, because it's cool to get a job and have someone appreciate what you do and want you to do it for them. Um, as far as booking the Dr. Eggman role specifically, knowing that it was a very popular franchise and knowing at least having a general idea of Dr. Eggman's role in the franchise, that was really cool because I knew that lots of people would get what I do and with any luck, enjoy it, which and for the most part, that seems to be the case. Well, I may enjoy it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. So the next question is from... Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing the right lame or flip side because it's like all one word so hopefully it's not like I am he or whatever um and and hopefully if you can't like answer this question it's all right um okay. he says or she says uh when you were voicing two Eggmans in Generations how did that thought process differ from when you voiced one of them um, it didn't really, because basically I'm just standing in a room reading a script, and it's no different than act than dubbing, for example, regular uh, anime dubs that I do, because very often I'm reacting to no one, because I'm recording dialogue and responding to people who have not yet recorded their lines. So I, I imagine what they're going to sound like, and as long as the director thinks that the performance that I give matches what the other person's going to sound like once they deliver their line, then that works. So as far as me reading my own dialogue, um, it's just a simple matter of reading down the page and and be sure that it sounds like I'm having a conversation essentially with myself. All right, then. Okay. The next person. Uh, how do you think a man will get out of the situation that he found himself at the end of the generations? And again, if you don't like want either you don't want to or you can't answer, answer the question that's all right that's really something that i leave up to the writers the writers write the show i'm just i'm just a talent I show yeah. up. So let the writers figure out what's going to happen next i don't care i'm there to make it happen all right the next question is by blood master 12 and he says how is it like to play the villain that always loses um, it's cathartic to play a villain just in general because you get to get a lot of your aggressions out with no real real world consequences so in a perfect world villains should always lose don't you think yeah. so I have I have no problem losing because villains ought to lose anyway well there was almost one time where Eggman won in racing <laughs> Yeah, but you can't have that happen all the time because then it's, it's no fun. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you won, but you lost, so. <laughs> See? Um, so, the next question is by a person named Ivo Eggman Robotnik. Uh, what is your favorite Sonic game? Um, it's a toss up between colors and generations. They were both very well written. I was pleased with the bits of my performance that I heard. I was very pleased when I was recording them as well. But there were the dialogue was, was witty and made me laugh. When I, and um, they both uh, seemed to get very good response from folks who were playing it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, because um, uh, it was it was a really good performance because you know they had different writers for those two same uh, for those uh, two games, Generations and Colors. It was from the same people who written uh, Happy Tree Friends, am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because um, it was so wacky and crazy. It reminded me of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog a little bit. Yeah, it was an in- it was an interesting direction to take. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did. They took a very odd direction, but they they did it really well. I think they just did it great. Fun would be a good word to describe it. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. Yeah, you know the term, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. They yeah. they made something and didn't break it at all. Yeah. Then you can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> the next question is from a person named 
I am me. So, is there any character that you wish you could have done or would have liked to do, Sonic or otherwise? And if so, which one? And we kind of already asked this question. So we'll do this. We broaden the question to, to expand outside the Sonic universe. I don't have specific characters in mind because it's 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 kind of silly to wish to play a specific character because it's really based on whether you're asked to audition for something or have the chance to audition for something and whether you're going to get cast in the role or something. But in general, I would love to have a big role in a big theatrical release or a big uh, primetime television release, uh, something animation-wise. And I've done some uh, minor secondary roles in theatrical stuff. And I've been in lots of TV shows, but not quite prime time. So if any prime time TV producers or big time theatrical uh, animation producers are listening, feel free to cast me in some one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I remember you, you were, um, you only had one line. It was like a, it was like a, a three sentence line in an anime that I watched called Fairy Tale. And you were one of the minions. Okay. And I was like, oh my God, Mike is in here. I'm, mm-hmm. And I was really, I was really surprised because I didn't know you um, did anime as well. Oh, my entire career in anime, but um, the first um, dubbing gigs that I did, most of them were in an, were in anime. Oh, okay. All right. So the next question we have is from S X R one two three, my Mr. Pollock. What are your thoughts on the direct? Um, I don't think they're becoming more child, more childish. But then again, I'm not a gamer in the, in the strictest sense of the word. Word, I'm I'm an actor. I'm just here in the games and make the games come to life, essentially. Um, but I think the a lot more fun and playful, and if that equates with being childish, then I guess so. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because I love comedy. And yeah. That's- Games are making me laugh. That makes me happy. It's not a bad thing. It's it's good that they're. It's sort of good that they're coming childish because then they're broadening their um, horizons for more types of people to play it, right? Sure. And stuff like that. Absolutely. The next question is from Epic D. What Sonic game do you think has the or has been your best work? Um, again, it's a toss-up between Colors and Generation. I liked how they were written. I liked the witty dialogue that I was given and the last scenarios that I was given. And uh, uh, the combination of the, the PA announcements and the which were tons of fun. Um, and the big ending scene in Generations. I can't really pick a favorite between the two. Okay. Uh, from the from the next person, GA3. Out of all those roles that you've done, which one do you most relate to? That's an interesting question. Um, I relate probably to the ones that make me laugh, and probably the ones that sound like the native New Yorker, because I am a native New Yorker. So, for example, Meat from Ultimate Muscle, who basically sounded like a New York truck driver, made me feel very much at home because I'm around people who sound like that all the time. <laughs> New York. Um, and any of the characters that are based on that general voice, uh, for example, um, Bonaparte from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, a much maligned series, but a fun character to do, is basically the effeminate version of, uh, of the Meat voice, or essentially a Harvey Firestein voice. So it sounded something like because it's basically an effeminate type in New York. Um, and uh, so the voices, the voices that sound like folks that I grew up with would probably be the best answer to that. All right, that's that was a really good answer. I like that. One. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Go on to the final question that I have in a list of things from. Um, questions and questions. Um, Dr. Eggman is a popular character. Do you really enjoy seeing him, or is it a little difficult at that? The only difficulty is when there's lots of yelling, but that's the case with any character. If you're being careful, 
like not to strain your voice, you're going to strain your voice because you're yelling. So, apart from that, it is really not yelling. Um, it's excellent to be supported by a production staff and a director who like what I do, which at least in recent recordings has definitely been there. Um, so it's it is definitely a joy to play. All right. So, um, John L, do you have any questions for Mr. Paul? Um, let me see. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, though. I mean. This is my first interview with a voice actor, and um, I really wanted to meet voice uh, actors. Do you have any um, advice on voice acting? Well, that's my first question. Um, sure. In general, learn acting in general. Um, learn stage acting. Take theater courses if you can find them at school. If there's any school theater or community theater you can do um, if you're in college. Um it probably wouldn't be a bad idea if you plan to make a career out of it to minor in some type of theater program, even though I had my heart set on being on the radio as a child, and so I majored in broadcasting and wanted to minor in theater, but the friendly folks at Syracuse University said, oh, we don't allow minors in theater. You must devote your life to theater, so go scratch, kid. Um, but that's okay. I still knew what I was doing acting-wise, and now I'm doing professional, professionally, so take that SU. Um, learn theater in anywhere you can because voice acting is more than just using your voice it's acting and it's it's a little tougher than stage acting in some degrees because you're not always acting with someone you're acting by yourself with just a director an engineer on the other side of the glass and you got to imagine the acting that's going on around you that will be filled in later um and apart from when you're in the booth have fun let yourself go don't be afraid to look like an idiot because you're you're there to bring a character to life, and if it takes acting like an idiot, you gotta act like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's some good advice. Thanks. Sure. Um, do you have another question, or or can I go to my question? Um, or do you still need to think of one? Well, I have one more question. Um, how does um how did you feel when you uh, heard that uh, Doctor Eggman was going to be in Wreck It Ralph? Um, it was bizarre because no one told me. Oh, really? And to this day, no one is. So, it was interesting to find out from seeing clips online and people tell me about the clips that they saw online because I got no official notification at any time during the process. Hmm. Uh. Well, I, I actually have one question and it kind of backs off Darnell's. Um, when you heard that Eggman was going to be in Red Ralph, were you expecting a call from Sega or a call from the company that was making the movie for you to be in it for like one or two lines or something like that? Or were you just gonna like wait and see if they actually call you for something? Since in most cases they call me when, if and when they want me, I was waiting for a call. It did not arrive. Ah, uh, well, would, it be, would, it, uh, would you have been happy to actually voice him in the movie? I love working. So, so ab absolutely. Yeah, because you, earlier you were talking about like uh, you would love to be in a theatrical release, and if they got you for this, and this would be what it was. And there's no reason to turn it down. I mean, in most cases, especially with voice acting, there's not always a lot of opportunity to turn things down. If you're booked on a job, you're expected to take the job and go to the job. Mm -hmm. But if they don't need you for whatever reason, such as in the case in that film where there was no dialogue of his own he was just speaking among in a crowd and you can basically get anyone to make somebody sound like they're part of a crowd then eh, it wasn't uh, there was no reason to seek me out and book me for the film apparently yeah it would have been good to see you in the film do you actually plan on going to see it sometime no I'm not in it <laughs> well oh that's a good reason yeah that's mainly why I don't go to the theaters okay <laughs> yeah uh, if, you want, if you want to see me in a movie or hear, hear me in a movie go uh, online to uh, Netflix or Amazon and stream a copy of A Cat in Paris which was released in a uh, limited release in theaters in this uh, over the summer and I play Mr. Baby and I am in that movie <laughs> well now I have I know what I'm going to do this weekend <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh. So, um, uh, I don't think there's, I don't have anything else to say. Uh, do you have anything else for Mr. Pollock? You don't know? Um, uh, I hope I'm not wasting your time, Mike. Uh. Not yet. <laughs> well, um, let's see, uh, if you were to make your own Sonic game, what would you add into it? That's again, it's a writer's thing. I'm not a gamer, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be any good at creating creating a game because I don't play games. But I leave that to, to the professionals. Ah, uh, Sega. Don't don't they just love us? Well, Mike loves everybody too. He's a good guy. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, no, that's all I have to say though. I know I didn't say much. I apologize, but uh, it's okay. But. Um, I hope that was. I hope those questions were really informative and and, and you got right to it. Thank you. There were some very interesting questions among those. All right. So everyone, this has been a great video. We had a great interview with Mr. Mike Pollock and with some assistance from Darnell, aka the Flyboy Dek, mm -hmm. and um, basically. You have just watched an interview with a great voice actor. And I hope you guys have a great day. I hope this video was informative to you. And be sure. And this is Chris. Oh, oh I'm okay. sorry. Don't oh, and, um, you go. Mike, don't you have a website? Why, well, yes, I do. In fact, I have a couple that you can pay attention to. Uh, my personal website is itsamike.com, just uh, spelled the way it sounds I T S A M I K E.com. And my uh, wacky celebrity death comedy blog, uh, because I have a knack for making fun of dead celebrities when they uh, hit the uh, hit the dirt, as it were, uh, mm -hmm. is the latest deadlines dot blogspot dot com. Oh, All right. so have you, you did can... any impressions on Rodney Dangerfield? Uh, he died before I started blogging, but uh, I'm sure I would have had I been blogging at the time. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you had a good time, Mike Bullock. I did. It was a lovely time. Yeah. Thanks for, I, thanks for I, listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for asking. I had a great time. Yeah, me too. And, cool. Awesome. And, so I hope everyone has a great day. And this is the CPK Studios. Darnell from the Flyboy DK yeah. and Mike Bullock signing off. So long for now. See you guys.